Hello, friends, and welcome again to this midweek devotion. During this devotion, we're going to be landing on a number of different passages of Scripture that have to do with water. We could actually land on a lot of different passages of Scripture. One of, one of the key images in Scripture is water. I think this devotion, though, was inspired by a vacation that my wife and I went on last or a couple of weeks ago where in the heat and humidity of our Canadian summer, it, water was absolutely essential. We would bathe in it, we would drink it. It was something that we enjoyed almost every day. We went canoeing down the French River and enjoyed a swim at the base of a waterfall. It was indeed beautiful. I think this devotion was also inspired by an experience that we had as a family last year where we took a trip from San Francisco, California, south to Los Angeles, and then headed west through a number of different national parks. We landed in, with our vehicle in Joshua Tree National Park and spent about two hours there, only two hours there. Two hours because Joshua Tree National Park, while beautiful and curious because it included that Joshua tree, that species of cactus slash pine, that hybrid that was something I had never seen. While it was beautiful, it was dry and hot. And again, after about two hours, we said, let's go. From Joshua Tree National Park, we headed to the, one of the most beautiful spots in the world. Maybe some of you have been there. We headed to Grand Canyon National Park. And again, our experience of the heat of Arizona was something that was indeed overwhelming. We spent about maybe four, five hours in Grand Canyon National Park. If you've ever been there, you will know that there is a river that goes through that canyon. That river is way down there. You have to hike miles and miles and miles through the heat of that Arizona uh, summer in order to get there. And so after four hours not wanting to, to uh, hike down to the bottom, we said, let's go. We headed north from Grand Canyon National Park and we landed again in our van in one of our favorite spots or what has become one of our favorite memories from that trip. And the reason it has become one of our favorite memories has to do with water. We landed in Zion National Park, where we spent, I think, about three days. And Zion National Park is, is absolutely stunningly beautiful. All of the other parks are stunningly beautiful as well. But Zion National Park has, has a river going right through the center of it. And that river you can access with ease. In fact, there was a hike that we took where we did a, a creek stomp, a river stomp, for about five miles there and back, two and a half miles there two and a half miles back for a total of five miles. And, and we spent much of the rest of the time bathing in, in that river, the base of a waterfall. And it was refreshing because all around us was the desolation of a wilderness, the des desolation of a place that was baked by the sun. And I think that, uh, that image of water plays heavily on the Hebrew mind, on the Jewish mind, because they too had an experience of the desert. They too had an experience where nature, because of the heat of the sun, became oppressive, even could be deadly for them. And water for them was a source of life. And so when uh, scripture talks about water. The first place I want to land on is actually a New Testament passage of Scripture. It's the New Testament passage of Scripture where Jesus Christ calls himself the living water. We read these words, John chapter 4. Jesus, Jesus is on his way north, and on his way north, he uh, goes through the, the region of Samaria, and on, or in that region of Samaria, he meets a woman at a well at the high point of the day during the heat of the sun. Jesus asks her, or said, and this is what we read from uh, verse 7, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? 
His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that, was ask, that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him. And he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. What, where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did his sons and his flocks and herds. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And I want to uh, uh, take us back in scripture and read one more passage of scripture that, that has a lot to do with water. It's that creation story that we meet in Genesis chapter 2. We read these words, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth and no plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth and there was no man to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And then we get this image of God from the waters that, he, that have sprung up from earth, this image of God planting a garden in Eden. And from that garden, we get another image, again, an image of waters, of of four rivers flowing from that water, from the, the, the springs of Eden that will water the earth, that will become the source of life. As we think about this image of water, and we are reminded by Jesus Christ himself that he is indeed the living water, we are reminded that while water that we can drink and water that we can bear, uh, or water that we can bathe in, refreshes our body it is as we drink from the living water of jesus that our souls are refreshed it is as we drink from the fountain of jesus that we begin to produce the the good fr good fruit that comes from jesus the fruits that come from the life that god wants to give to us through jesus that comes to us now through his holy spirit there's one last place that I want to land and ask the final question, well, well, what does this look like? What does this mean for us as followers of Jesus Christ? And I, I find it significant that that conversation that Jesus has is with a Samaritan woman. Those Samaritans, when it came to how they were treated by the, the rest of the nation of Israel, were considered the outsiders, the outcasts. As we read the Old Testament passages of scripture, we are reminded that Assyria had invaded the northern kingdoms of Israel, that they had sent some of their own to live with the people of Israel. They had intermarried with them. Children had been, uh, had been produced, had become the offspring of, that, of, of those uh, intermarriages. And because of that, the Samaritans were seen as an outcast people. And in another passage, also featuring a Samaritan woman, Jesus Christ is asked the question, who is my neighbor? And then he tells that story that, that many of us will remember, that story of a good Samaritan who comes across a man who was beaten, who was left to die, and who treats that man and treats his wounds and makes sure that that man is cared for, that the expenses of his medical his medical expenses are also cared for. Jesus Christ in that story asked the question, well, who is my neighbor? As we think about this question, what does it mean to be nourished by the life-giving waters of Jesus Christ? I, I believe it means that, that we become ambassadors of Christ, that, that through the power of the Holy Spirit and the fruit that, that comes into our lives, and we know those fruits, the fruits of of love and joy and peace, patience, kindness that, 
that reaches out to the others through those fruits. Jesus Christ uses us, as Paul will describe in the book of Corinthians and in chapter 5, he says, that anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Therefore, and he goes on to to talk about the implications of that, that the implications of that are that we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, ambassadors of reconciliation. And in our world where racial injustice seems to be a prominent conversation, that means that we as followers of Jesus Christ are people who reach out to those who Maybe we once didn't consider neighbors, but because of what Jesus Christ has done in us, they are now our neighbors. They are the ones that we love. We are reminded in scripture that indeed Jesus Christ is that living water that refreshes, that nourishes, and that causes our lives to bear fruit. Friends, thanks for listening. And I hope that you would bathe in the living water of Jesus. You wouldn't just be sprinkled in that water, but that you would be bathed in it, immersed in it so deeply that God's Holy Spirit would flow through each of us. Again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. May he lift up his face upon you and give you his peace. Amen. You won't see me again next week. Cheryl and I are again going to another lake. This time with our children, Emily and Jonathan are joining us, and we will be camping as a family. And so maybe you can pray for us as we enjoy some, some water that will refresh our bodies. Again, we will see you in two weeks. Goodbye.